Well, welcome back. It's been a long time. My name's Todd McAllister, and uh, this is Lure Up. Well, I want to explain something. You know, I haven't been around for about a month. Um, got COVID. Hit me hard. So what had happened was I went and got my first shot, my first vaccine shot, and apparently I had COVID. Because when I come back, I started getting sick and got sicker and sicker. And so I finally got tested, and they said, yeah, you got COVID. So... The only two uh, possibilities were <laughs> that shot had COVID on it, or I had gotten, you know, get picked up COVID somewhere, which is probably what happened. But anyway, man, it knocked me down, put me back, but I'm back and I'm ready. And this next one, this is a fun one for me. It's October, it's the Halloween month. So, what we're going to do is we're going to build us a, 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 a fish that's been slashed in half by another fish and when he slashed him in half he ripped him open and lets his guts hanging out and the whole back section's missing so it's going to be a bloody gory horror build this month no guts no glory you remember who said that you ever watch gold rush with uh, todd hoffman and his dad jack Remember that? Jack would come in and he'd say, let's go for it. Let's just keep digging deeper. And Todd would say, we don't have the resources. And he'd say, no guts, no glory. <laughs> so this next lure you'll understand as we build it. And maybe you've already seen the thumbnail. I'm sure you have. So it's time to get started. Let's not delay. No guts, no glory. I'm drawing a little bit about what I'm thinking. You know, something along the lines of this. Um, the body will get cut off here and it'll be jagged. The mouth will be open. <clears throat> the gills will be flared really heavy. So you can see the red gill in there. And then of course you're going to see some scale pattern. And the gill plate and the eye. Everything will look intact from here up. But it'll look like he's gasping for air because he's been cut in half. He's been <laughs> severed by like a, a toothy critter, like a pike. So, or maybe a saltwater fish. So anyway, that's the idea. So let's go see if we can't get him cut out. This is gonna be one of those where, you know, I just have to carve on it and get a feel of what I think works as I'm carving. And of course it'd be a hook hanger here and then maybe, maybe this soft plastic section here, we put like a, a barb out here to hook it onto. Okay, as I'm cutting this thing out, um, I decide that I'm going to go ahead and leave a big portion of that on there. Um, you know, here I'm cutting the gill slots in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave, I'm going to make small cuts that indicate where I'll cut this thing off at. But I'm going to leave the meat of it on there like a handle so I can, um, you know, hold on to it as I'm carving the shape and stuff a little better. Because it's kind of a short bait by the time I cut that off. So that's what's going on here when I don't really cut all the way through. I just don't feel the confidence in the sander. I think we're going to... I think we're going to take this rascal. I mean, this to me is starting to look like a snapping turtle head. I don't like that. But anyway, we're gonna go we're gonna get the carving knife out and a little razor knife out and see if we can't get a feel of it. The secret I think is is when you carve and you see where you've removed, okay, I so I'm looking at the, the angles I put on here, and I'm thinking to myself, as I picture the head and the eyes bulging and the you know, the bridge of the nose and the lip and everything being turned up as this fish is trying to gasp for life. I think to myself, you know, is this, is this it? Is this what I'm looking for? And uh, taking little pieces and reevaluating it, you know, coming in and saying, okay, it's obviously not gonna be square back here so <laughs> I put a radius on it 
And as I put that radius on, I keep asking myself, is that, is that enough? Is that normal? Is that right? The gill plates, for instance, they're not square, so I'm going to come in here and nip these on the corner. Start rounding them. And they're not going to come clear to the top of the back either. They actually, they come down in here. Now, with this particular bait I'm making, I want these gills flared way out. So, when I look at the body, it's going to be a lot further in right here behind the gills. And these gills are going to come pointed toward the front. I've got a big radius on here now, but I've got a lot of material to move because the fish's head is going to be far more shaped like that. Now, one of the things I want to make sure of is that when I cut this gill plate, I don't cut back in there and remove the tissue that I want to use, the material I want to use to kind of show where the actual gill is back in there. So I want to create like two steps. So one will be the gill plate, and then there'll be a break line, and then the, the gill itself. That's what I'm hoping to accomplish there. Something I want to point out about this wood you look closely there you can see that the, uh, the surface there is shiny well it's actually denser for the like first sixteenth of an inch and so if you cut this down where one side you remove that and the other side you leave that you're actually dealing with something that's far more dense so if you can cut a sixteenth off of all of it all the way around you'll have nice even smooth um, grain to work with and that's what I recommend I didn't do it on this and I kind of regret it Next, I take a Dremel tool and just start hollowing out the mouth. You know, I'm really trying to really capture some realism on this one. Um, you know, fish are going to be looking at this up close and personal. As they see guts hanging out of it, I want it to look real. And, uh, I think it's time to add some details. I'm going to start with the gills. <coughs> what I'm thinking is, is that I'd like, I'd like to have a gill with three break lines that start about right here for the first one. about right there. So that would be one, two, three layers. The lips. And this is really a strange lip system. It really comes down pretty fine and then has this overlapping piece that comes like so. So this comes down pretty fine, and then it has this, the actual gills, I'm going to try to cut right in here, leave a very thin gill plate, and then let it start to expand a little bit as it wraps around the chin, and this is going to expose the actual gills and you know gills are in layers so you'll actually see two layers of gills what I'm hoping for with just a hint of the third right there let's go ahead and cut let's start with the gill so this will be the first one and I really love this feature that I'm putting in um, the break, you know, the break lines on the gill plate, they add so much character. And, you know, when you capture it just right, it gives it that realistic look after you, you know, put an iridescent pigment or a foil on there and get that reflection. So I'm really happy with the way these turned out. So now let's move on to the lips. Really a strange lip system on these things.
Okay. Now let's see if we can't carve the gills in. That's going to be the toughie. I tell you what, oh, I didn't finish the lip on this side. went through the lip. Well, I mean, I did go through the lip, but I almost cut it off. I may have to fill that little crack with some crazy glue. Does that look about right? Is that a little small? I think it's probably. Let's see what the next size up looks like. I think these are the next size up. Yeah, yeah. I think this might be a better fit here. Yes. I like to err on the side of larger with the eyes. So the eye, I think, should go about right there. So if we were to carry the center of that over. Now I can sit here and do this. And what this will do is when you look at it head on, you can kind of start to see that, hey, that's pretty close. The gills kind of look like, almost like feathers. I mean, they're in the strands. So I'm going to take this sharp owl and, you know, it's a radius. So I'm going to try to come out like rays of the sun. I'm just going to try to stay perpendicular to the arch. So, scratching them in basically. I don't know how well this is going to work, how well it's going to look. Okay, got the details in pretty much the way I want them. Got the gills, gill plates, mouth. So, what I'll probably do now is Go ahead and cut this off and create a hollow cavity that would be shaped like a fish body. And that way I can <coughs> um, decide how I want to do the guts. The entrails sticking out. People start celebrating the gore. <laughs> celebrating gore. What's that all about? Okay, the column is going to be right in here, I assume, and the rib cage is going to come down like so. So, okay, it's got to be good enough. Maybe a little thinner on the belly. I don't know. We can always make the guts bulge a little bit past. I'm ready to put an eyelet in the gut section, the, you know, the cutoff section, in order to um, have the guts, and I want them to be able to, you know, freely move. Even though they're going to be out of rubber, I want them to be able to freely move. So I'm going to do a double eyelet system where I just I put an eyelet in and then hook another one on it, and then the one that's sticking out here. I'll probably make a little feature that has ribs on it that can push into the guts and uh, we'll go from there. And also I'm going to add a weight about right in here. I tested it like this with a hook on it to see and it sits upright but it's way too high out of the water so I'm going to put a pretty good size weight right there. Back in the day, I keep in a shot. 
this bigger shot um, in a Prince Albert can. Remember the old Prince Albert can, some of you older guys? It was, uh, you know, a tobacco product, I guess. And so, um, okay, before I shove that down in there, let's just make sure that works. Might put another one up here in the head. Anyway, take a little baking soda. I'm gonna top this off with some Bondo. Okay, so I top him up with some Bondo, and then I take a little bit of uh, micro balloons and a paintbrush. And I, you've seen me do this in other videos if you've been watching my videos. Um, I kind of work that Bondo while it's wet. It just saves on sanding. That's the only reason I do this. I decided to take a brush and prime it with some white paint just so I can push it into the pores of that white wood. Kind of got ahead of myself. I forgot to glue the eyelets in. So I mix up some five minute epoxy and go ahead and glue that, <coughs> excuse me, glue that belly eyelet in. And, uh, that five minute epoxy inside that white wood holds really good. Pink. I'm black now okay I've got some it was an old badminton set of netting that I'm going to use to um, put a scale pattern on that sides and back. That's too much blue again. Oh man, it come out nice. Now it just needs good coat of clear. And we'll be ready to do the guts. Got me a little MC270 automotive clear. Um, it's really thin. But I like that. Um, it seems to cover really good. Okay, clear coat's all dried up. It's looking, it's looking good. You know, um, you might be thinking to yourself, you know, if you're gonna put a bill in there, why didn't you do it already? Well, I may not put a bill in there. I may make it a popper, and I wanted to test it as a popper first, um, and then you know if. If I like it, then, you know, we'll stay with the popper. If I don't like it or it doesn't pop or, or you know, it doesn't give me the kind of action I think would draw in a strike, then, you know, I'll just 
cut a slot right there and put a bill in. But probably start with a piece about, I don't know, maybe this long. You know, of course, I don't have a point on it. flat. Okay, there's a flat spot. Alright. Push this down in there. And see, I, I want it thicker than that. I could make it thicker. I could just push it down further. You know what I mean? I could take something and push down on it. Maybe make it just a little bit thicker because I can only sand it. Okay. Alright, and then I'll just take my eyelet and suspend it in there, like so. Smooth cast 300, I put it in these bottles because um, it's a lot easier to pour without spilling and, and it seems to last pretty good. It, uh, it does start to, you know, get a little crusty on the, on the A part um, as oxygen gets to it over time. But, uh, and then I just basically put a little heat to it. You don't see the heat gun, but I'm curing it, trying not to melt the uh, modeling clay. undo this rascal it's looking good okay I think that'll work pretty good Jack would always say, no guts, no glory. Well, I agree with him. It's time to make some guts. Okay, I've got some old plastic here that uh, I had used. It was probably white at one time, but I just kept heating it, heating it, heating it. And it's kind of got a uh, off collar now. And this, to me, kind of reminds me the collar is... Uh, of what the, the tissue, the sinew, is to make up the intestines and maybe the skin of the air sac and the stomach. So we're gonna do the rubber with this color and then we're gonna use some reds on the paint to kinda, you know, make it look bloody. Okay, I'm not, I'm not really gonna make a mold. I'm just gonna, well, I am gonna make a mold, but I'm just gonna take some modeling clay and a few tools like a end of a marker and I'm just going to push in and create what I think would be like an air bladder, a little bit of a stomach and some intestines. And uh, we're just going to pour that and see what happens. So I'm thinking something down in there about like so. Let's start. Yeah, maybe the... And then uh, maybe down in here, that's where the stomach would be underneath the air bladder. And then maybe we would take off of that, maybe there would be like the intestines would be shredded. This would be something like that. And maybe another little string down here, just tissue hanging out. 
little piece off of here maybe something like that you know what that's probably probably not deep enough in there and it might have some imperfections in it too all right let's see what happens Okay, I think that's going to make a pretty good gutsy looking deal. I'm going to let that cool a little bit. And then I'm going to try to, you know, add a little clump on this side because it's too smooth on this side. So maybe we take uh, a little piece of this plastic while it's still wet. Maybe we can just put it in there like so. Yeah. I think we'll let that cool and uh, paint that up a little bit and see what happens. All right, let's see how it come out. Oh yeah, that's, that's gonna make some good looking guts. I'm gonna do this with a brush. I'm just gonna put a little red in there and a little white in there so I can make it some pink and some red. Yeah, I think you see a little bit of blue in there. I'm gonna deepen that. Deepen that color scheme a little bit. And I may repaint that a little bit once I get it on here. There we go. That looks gutsy. Doesn't it? I mean, would Jack Hoffman be proud of that? He could definitely not say no guts, no glory, because look at those guts. All right. Time to do a little touch-up painting. Oh, yeah. That looks gutsy. Okay. Time to test the old uh, no guts, no glory. Man, I say that right. No guts, no glory. Is that better? All right, here we go. See how it sits in the water. Oh yeah, kind of looks like a hula popper there sitting there. That'd pop bad. Oh, that's got a nice pop. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's going to catch some fish now. What? <laughs> My guts, <laughs> I casted the guts out of this thing. <laughs> oh man, they might be floating. Maybe, maybe, maybe they'll blow in and be able to get them back. Well, 
I guess old Gutsy here couldn't couldn't uh, he couldn't handle the the pressure. <laughs> he couldn't handle the G forces. So I may have taken too much off this bar. Actually, you know the guts. You know they were when I kind of um, added more plastic to it. I kind of created a lamination. I think it just split open. So we'll make some more guts and try it. You know if I do get some footage of me catching a fish on it, I'll post that. But uh, that was a fun build, and this was a cool lure. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And don't forget, lure up, baby.